copy formulas using your fill handle. So now that I've typed them in, I want to copy them to the rest of the document. So with my block cross, I highlight, select the black cross hair, and drag all the way down. To determine totals using the sum button. The next step is to determine the totals in row 13 for the hours worked in column D. Gross pay in column F, federal tax in column G, state tax in column H, and net pay in column J. To do this, select the cell to contain the sum, cell D13 in this case. Click the sum button on your home tab. This should sum the contents of the range D4 through D12. If so, click enter. Now, select the range to contain the sums range F13 to H13. Click the sum button to display totals in the selected range. Next, select J13. Click your sum button. And it should sum J4 to J12. Now that we have the totals in 13 in row 13 determined, the next step is to copy the tax percentage formula in cell I12 to I13. Remember, we can't use the sum button because we are um, using a calculation here based on these other numbers. So Highlight I-12, select your black crosshair, and drag down. Using the average, max, and min functions. With Excel, you can enter functions using one of five methods. Keyboard, pointer, insert function button in the formula bar, right here insert function, the submenu, sum menu, the sum button, the name box area in the formula bar. The method you choose will depend on your typing skills and whether you recall the function name and required arguments. In the following sections, three of these methods will be used. The insert function button in the formula bar method will be used to determine the highest number of dependents. The sum menu will be used to determine the lowest number of dependents. The keyboard and pointer will be used to determine the average number of dependents. Excel includes a function called the max function that displays the highest value in a range. Select cell C14. Click your insert function button in the formula bar to display the insert function dialog box. Click max in the select a function list. Click the OK button. Replace the text in the number one box with the text C4 colon C12. Click the OK button, and you should now have the highest. The next step is to enter the min function. Although you can enter the min function using the method used to enter the max function, the following steps will illustrate an alternative method. Select cell C15. And then click the sum arrow in your sum button menu. So do not click auto sum. You're going to click the drop down sum arrow and select min. Again, when you use this, Excel will think for you. So Excel thinks it wants me to find the lowest number out of this cell next to me. We don't. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is move this.
So I have the correct range of C4 to C12. You could have also clicked in here and typed it and then hit enter. The average function sums the numbers in a specified range and then divides the sum by the number of cells with the numeric values in the range. Select cell C16 and begin typing equals average. As you begin to type the word average, the formula autocomplete list pops up and you can find the average function. So you can either continue, continue typing or you can just double click average and it puts it in there for you. Then you can select or type C4 to C12. And then click the enter button. And you should get that result right there. Now let's say I want to find the highest, lowest, and the average for everything else in this chart. I'm going to select all three and then drag all the way across through J. Formatting the worksheet. Although the worksheet contains the appropriate data, formulas, functions, the text, and numbers need to be formatted to improve their appearance and readability. A theme formats a worksheet by applying a collection of fonts, font styles, colors, and effects to give it a consistent appearance. Click Page Layout on your tab, on your ribbon. Click the Page Layout tab. Click the Themes button. Point to several of the themes and you can get a live preview of what that will look like. And then I want you to finally select Ion. Display your home tab. We're going to work, uh, format our worksheet titles. Select A1 through K1. Go ahead and merge and center that text, and then merge and center A2 through K2. I will zoom out so you can see all of my screen in one shot there. For cell A1 and A2, let's change our cell styles to title. And for cell A2, let's decrease our font size so it's one lower, so 16. A background color and border can draw attention to the title of a worksheet. Select the range A1 and A2 and then click the fill color arrow to display the fill color gallery. You can preview a few. And then finally click on blue gray accent 5 lighter 60%. Click the borders arrow to display the borders gallery. and select Thick Outline Outside Borders. Click anywhere to deselect cells one and two. Apply cell style to the column headings and format the total rows. Select A3 to K3. Choose heading three in your cell styles gallery. Go ahead and center each of those titles by clicking the center button. And then apply the totals style in A13 through K13.
And then I want you to bold A14 through A16. Format dates and center data in cells. Select K4 through K12. Click the Format Cells Number Format Dialog Box Launcher. So you're going to be in your Home tab in your Numbers group. You're going to select this Dialog Box Launcher. Click on your Number tab if it's not already selected. Select Date in the category list and then click the one that's 3 slash 14 slash 12. So we're going to select this one and then click OK. Next you're going to select the range C4 to C 16, and you're going to center that. To apply an accounting number format and comma style format using the ribbon, as we did in Module 1. Select E4 through H4. Hold down your control key and select J4. And the range F13 through H13. And cell J13. This selects the non-adjacent ranges and cells. Click your account number format button. Now select the ranges to contain the comma style format. Select cells E5 through H12. And then J5 through J12. So you're going to hit that control key again. And choose the comma style button. Select the range D4 to D16. And then click your comma style button. To apply a currency style format with a floating dollar sign using the format cells dialog box. The currency format places dollar signs immediately to the left of the number and displays a zero for cells that have a value of zero. Select the ranges E14 to H16 and J14 to J16. Then click your number format dialog box launcher. If necessary, click the number tab and then click currency. Click the third style and then select OK. What's the difference between using the accounting number style and currency style? When using the currency style, as we just did, a floating dollar sign always appears immediately to the left of the first digit. With the accounting number style, the fixed dollar sign always appears on 